All right, so let me give you guys a brief introduction to nuclear chemistry. Uh, nuclear chemistry is quite different from the rest of the units we've been learning. Uh, and that's because for most of the year, we've been talking about chemical reactions. And chemical reactions involve just the valence electrons, or the electrons on the outside of the atoms. Nuclear reactions. Uh, typically ignores those valence electrons. Nuclear reactions uh, are all about how the nucleus is changing and interacting with the nucleus of other atoms. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So here I have two atoms. We're going to talk about some chemical interactions here, not nuclear just yet. Here we have hydrogen. Hydrogen has one proton in the nucleus and one electron. This is helium. Helium has two protons and two neutrons in the nucleus and two electrons on the outside. Now if you notice, what's on the outside are the electrons. So in chemical reactions, it's all about how these outside electrons interact with each other. The nucleus, for the most part, kind of just sits there and doesn't react. It's just the electrons on the outside. Um, so you guys remember like ionic bonding, for example. You have, say, a sodium ion. Sodium ion is a sodium atom that is missing one electron, so it has a positive charge. A chlorine or a chloride ion has a negative charge. It has an extra electron. And so these guys have opposite charges. Sodium is missing an electron. Chlorine has an extra electron. And because of their opposite charges, they attract, kind of like magnets. And so this is an ionic bond. They bond and stick to each other, are attracted to each other, because of the differences in the electrons they have. This is a chemical interaction. It only involves the electrons. Uh, another kind of bonding is called covalent bonds. So say we have like water, H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. So let me draw that real quick. Here's hydrogen. Here is an oxygen, and here is another hydrogen. Let me draw you the covalent bond. So hydrogen, here is its electron ring. That's oxygen, and here is another hydrogen on the other side. Hydrogen has one valence electron that it might share with the oxygen. The other hydrogen also has one valence electron that it's going to share. And oxygen has six valence electrons. So I'm going to draw those. Here's one two, three, four, five, and six. So oxygen is also sharing its valence electrons. So you can see how water bonds together. It shares electrons. Again, this is a chemical interaction. It only involves the electrons. They're on the outside. They're the ones doing all the bonding and, and unbonding and rearranging. Uh, the nucleus does not react. Okay, so now nuclear chemistry, on the other hand, kind of ignores those valence electrons. We're only looking at what is going on with the nucleus. Um, so, for example, um, well, first off, let's do a little bit of review of um, the kinds of atoms and why we have different elements, why we have different atoms. So just looking at hydrogen, hydrogen has an atomic number of one, which means it has one proton. Helium has an atomic number of two on the periodic table, which means it has two protons. And the next one up is lithium. It has an atomic number of three. That means it has three protons. So basically, the atomic number tells you the number of protons. And this is very important because what makes an element what it is, what makes hydrogen hydrogen, what makes helium helium, what makes uh, oxygen oxygen, or carbon carbon, is basically how many protons it has. Hydrogen only has one proton. If it only has one proton, it's hydrogen. If it has two protons, it's helium. If it has three protons, it's lithium. The number of protons determines what element it is. And in 
these chemical interactions, these chemical reactions I've shown you, as uh, we've seen all year, uh, the atomic number never changes. They never change from one atom type to another. So sodium is always sodium, chlorine is always chlorine, hydrogen is always hydrogen. No matter what kind of reaction they go through, they never change. They just rearrange. In nuclear chemistry, what we're finally going to talk about, nuclear chemistry, these things, the nucleus actually changes. And you can have one element changing into a completely different element. So, for example, uh, let's take uh, radon. Radon has an atomic number of 86. This means it has 86 protons. So let me write that for you. Let's see, radon, 86 protons. Now, radon can uh, radioactively decay. Radio radiation is the process by which one atom type spontaneously disintegrates into an atom of a different type. So, radon can spontaneously uh, throw away two of its protons. It'll eject the two protons from the nucleus. We'll talk more about how and and uh, what that looks like later on, but for now, let me just explain what radiation is. Radon will spontaneously uh, lose two protons from the nucleus, so they get thrown out of the nucleus. Well, if it loses, if it has 86 protons and it loses two of them, it's only left with 84 protons. And remember, the number of protons you have determines what element you are. So if you look on the periodic table, what uh, element has an atomic number of 84? What element only has 84 protons? And that happens to be polonium. So what you have here is radon spontaneously changing into a completely different element, polonium. Radon had 86 protons. It threw away two protons left with 84 protons. It is no longer radon. It is now polonium. And this process here, the losing of the two protons, this is where the change is happening in the nucleus. And the change, the process of that change is what we call radiation. Okay. So again, Nuclear react this is how nuclear reactions are different from chemical reactions. Nuclear reactions involve the nucleus, and it involves atoms changing from one type to another. 